Before I throw my complete living situation into disarray, I thought I would do a little show and tell of the books that I'm going to be bringing with me when I go to Spain. What they're about, why I was interested in them, why they're making the cut, and what I hope to get out of them on this particular part of my journey. Cringe, I know. Okay, so we have many books. We've got this many books. These are our books. I, I also have journals. Okay, numerically speaking, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten books. Ten books, all right? And most of these books are related to travel, unsurprisingly. But a couple of them are also related, kind of related to my degree, place-oriented, urbanization-oriented. And that would include books like this, which is called Places of the Heart. I have started it. I have not finished it. Um, it's called The Psychogeography of Everyday Life. And essentially, it gets into the reasons why we respond to certain places in a certain way. So you can see in the contents that it's like places of lust, places of awe, places of anxiety, boring places. Um, so it's interesting to me now that I've just gone through an urbanization and development degree to a read a little bit more pop nonfiction as opposed to strictly academic articles, lighter nonfiction about what I've just studied. Oh no, my bookmark just unraveled. I'm not going to take that as an omen or anything. <laughs> well, anyway, so this book is coming with me because it's related to my degree. It's a little bit lighter read um, related to the kind of topics that we talked about, but also more of a psychological evaluation of place, which I think is cool. This book, The Responsible Traveler, I am going to be doing a little review on because I am literally that close to the end. Um, this book is actually a book that I got at a book talk at Stanford's, um, which is my favorite bookshop here in London. The author came and talked about this book, and look, look, she signed it for me. How sweet is that? It goes from anecdotes to how global warming works, which companies are ethical and responsible group travel companies, organizations that you can support, and why Airbnb is not always a good idea. But it's, I think, a good book for if you're a traveler who's like setting out, maybe you're a college student and you have your first big trip coming up for a solo adventure or, you know, adventure with friends, whatever it is. Like that's kind of the audience that I imagine this book being best for. We'll get into this more later. Easy to pack. Where Epics Fail. This book I picked up, this was the first book I bought, first physical book I bought in London. When I first came to London, I told myself that I was not going to buy any physical books because I knew that I would have to move away from London. What I'm telling you is that life doesn't work out the way you plan. The reason why this book caught my interest and convinced me to purchase it is formatted like this. That's kind of just like little thoughts um, it's basically like meditative reflections, um, philosophical hot takes, I would say. I will flip open a page. It's not like, it, like, you see how it's formatted? They're just thoughts, you know, they're not, they may be coherently organized throughout the book, but for the most part, I will open it, flip to something, just give my, some, my brain something to mull over, right? So like, even in parting, love bestows gifts. The transformative fire is a separation. How... How appropriate is that for what I'm going through right now? So, you know, like things like that. And there's pages where I've responded to it. So writing, talking to the page like it's the last person on earth. And I sp circled it and said, and respecting the fear that they could disappear too. Call and response is what this book gives me. And so she was my first book here in London. This book, oh, she got me down bad. If you're ever at the Barbican gift shop, Danger, red alert, danger. The Barbican gift shop is, oh, I, I, I got so poor in that gift shop so fast, but it's called Planet City, reflection on what it means to live in a city, you know, and it has all of this like gorgeous photography and like digitized photography um, sprinkled throughout the book. Like 
it's just a beautiful thing to look at. It really just got me sensorialing because it's just like, look at that. And then they're all, but uh, they're a collection of essays. And there's a, there's a Velasco in there too. I didn't even notice that until just now. Uh, kind of similar to Places of the Heart. I picked up this book because it was related to um, my degree. It wasn't just heavy academic reading. Like even though these are a collection of essays, it, different vibes, right? Come in with me. Next up, I bought this book, How to Travel by the School of Life. And the School of Life, for anybody who isn't aware, who needs therapy is <laughs> all I'm saying. Who needs therapy when you have the School of Life? How to Travel. At this point, with I've got a good number of travel experiences under my belt. This might seem like a bit of a basic choice, but that's one of the most important things about travel for me is that it's not something you perfect. It's important to keep reflecting on how and why we travel and who we are when we travel. That's a continuous evolution, right? That's not something that we just do once and get better at like math. So this book I bought specifically to kind of re-ground me in thinking about travel like that. And I want to keep my eyes open to the spice of life. Silver Dollar Girl. This is my childhood book. I read this book cover to cover 8 million times. Now it's just kind of a talisman, you know, it comes with me wherever I go. I read it before coming to London just to kind of be like, oh, like, let's re-encounter this. And damn if this was informative. The premise of it is her father had gone to Colorado to seek his fortune in the gold mines. He left her back in the East Coast. She doesn't like her life there. She runs away, dressed as a boy to cross America to find her father, right? Um, so there is so much in this book that I see now years down the line that I resonate with. If you want an adult version of the book, like if you do not want to read this random house book for kids, Isabella in this Daughter of Fortune is this exact same book, this exact same book, the exact same story, except from Chile, I believe, Chile to California, you know, about a, an adult woman, but it is the exact same principle, girl left with family, doesn't like her life, runs away, dressed as a boy to find somebody in Isabella, in this case, to find a lover, in her case, in this children's books case, um, to find her father. But literally the themes, they be the same. But this book, formative. So this book is called The Dark Tourist and it's, the caption is sightseeing in the world's most unlikely holiday destinations. It's more about the darker side, like dark, going to darker places, places with more complicated histories, um, places that people don't necessarily choose to go to typically for travel purposes. And so I thought that this would be a good kind of like counter narrative to the, ah, oh, travel, you know, the vibes of it. Not that a lot of travel books are like that. I feel like what good travel writing does is kind of throw that complication into relief, right? So I'm excited to get into this. Haven't done it yet. It's still brand spanking new. <sighs> yeah, she's coming. How the World Thinks a book on the global history of philosophy. This is a pretentious ass thing for me to be reading, but I had a philosophy phase when I was a kid from like circa 13 to 15. I was like deep in it. Like Sophie's World kicked me off. Sophie's World, another formative read. Um, and I got super into philosophy and I was like, why do we think thoughts? And we had that phase and I haven't really re-encountered philosophy in a meaningful way in, I would say a solid decade at this point. And when I saw this book, I was like, okay, we can kind of connect two things. We can connect the global aspect that I'm, you know, currently interested in. And we can kind of tie that back to philosophy and maybe just re-encounter my interest for philosophy. And like, I'm not trying to get deep. I'm not trying to like wear a beret and sit in a cafe and pontificate. I do think there's something to be said about going back to old interests. It's very easy to hyper fixate on new stuff, but going back to old interests to see how I perceive them after time has gone by, I think is equally interesting because now you know more, you have other fields, industries, experiences, you have other pools of knowledge to draw from and like perceive subjects through. And so my understanding of philosophy as a 13 year old 
obviously, it's going to be very different from my understanding and perception of philosophy as a 25 year old. So I kind of got it with that in mind, just kind of re-encounter. There's a theme, there's a theme of re-encountering going on with my choice in readings here. Uh, this book I believe was on sale when I got it. It's like a collection of travel writing, the Brandt's travel writing competition. I think they took the best pieces over 20 years of this competition and compiled it. Um, each piece is only 800 words. There's a theme for each year's competition. Writers can write 800 words of it and that's the deal I believe. And so yeah, I just wanted to see what other travel writers are writing and getting noticed for. So yeah, it is kind of a what's out there in the travel writing industry. And then this is my indulgent, my guilty pleasure. Okay, I need people to not judge me for this one. The Grand Master of Mnemonic Cultivation. Mo Dao Zushi. I, this is a Chinese drama. Um, it initially started out as an internet novel and then it blew up. There is a live action. There is a donghua. There is an audio drama. There is a comic. There is, now this is the official English translation because before it was just some gracious high schooler who spent her time translating this book that I believe is like over 600,000 words. So this is only, this is part one of probably like 10. And there are already three parts of this book out. What I love about this this printing is that they, they use the art from a fan artist. Like that's gorgeous drawing, you know? This is my, I fear neither the judgment of God nor the judgment of man read. So yeah, that's a lot of weight. <laughs> it's a lot of pounds taken out of my luggage count right there. Theoretically, all of these books are coming with me. Each book had a reason for being there, so I will try and link as many of these as possible down below in case you're interested in reading them for yourself. But yeah, these are the books that I'm bringing with me on my onward journey. I say that though, as if I didn't actually send an entire suitcase full of mostly books back home with my mom when she came and visited me in July. There was a whole nother suitcase in the equation here. That suitcase is back in Phoenix, Arizona. It is full of books and presents and some clothes. Onwards.